theory about that because um, so many people confuse self-love with pleasure. And they, you know, they think that when they feel pleasure, that's love. No, that the more whole you feel, the less need for pleasure you'll have. The less whole you feel, the more you're attached to things that are going to stimulate you and create pleasure. So, so then how is self-love born? Um, you have to come up against the end of your emotional belief. You have to come to the very point where you don't think you can go any further, that you've reached the end and you don't believe that there's anything beyond that. And then you have to step out a little further and go a little further than where you thought you could go. Every time you do that, something awakens in you. You have more respect for yourself. You have more respect for life. You have more respect for others because you realize that change isn't that easy. You start to feel this kind of sense of peace and, and compassion because you've come up against your own limits and you, you're stretching yourself beyond those limits. So then when you finally free yourself from the chains of those emotions and those habits that keep you anchored to the past, mm -hmm. There's a liberation of energy. And that liberation of energy is the body going from particle to wave, from matter to energy. And that energy that's being released, the body starts to feel what we call joy or love or freedom. And that is what I call the natural state of being. So you're not getting that joy or that freedom or that love from anything outside of you. There's nothing out there that's creating it. It's happening from within you. So then, we see then in our research, when people really start to cross that river of change and start to break through, and they begin to activate certain latent systems in their brain, and those latent systems start signaling oxytocin, oxytocin, the love chemical, oxytocin signals nitric oxide, nitric oxide signals a chemical that causes your heart and lungs to swell. Your heart literally is engorging with energy and blood and it's literally swelling and this center now is activated. So then when you feel that, you're, you're not going to want to lose that feeling. In fact, if you start judging another person, if you start getting impatient with another person, you'll notice that feeling will go away. You start analyzing yourself, that feeling will go away. Go away. So then it makes sense then that when you feel that level of wholeness, that you feel so whole that you wouldn't want to lose the feeling, then self-love leads to allowing, yeah. which means I'm just going to allow you because I'm so in love with myself, I can allow you. When I'm not in love with me, I'm going to pick you apart. But the more in love I am with myself, the more love and appreciation I have for all things. I am no longer in the same energy as my enemy, or the, or in the same energy as my coworker that I despise. I'm in a different energy. And then the side effect of allowing is called joy. So then if you're not a judging or criticizing, then you're not dividing your energy. And if you're not dividing your energy, you're going to feel joy as a side effect. So then more and more people start to figure this out. In other words, if you spend two hours in a meditation, getting beyond your fear or your anger or your pain or your suffering, it took you two hours to get beyond it. And you feel the liberation of you getting beyond those limited states. I guarantee you, you would be walking around in your life celebrating because that divine intelligence that's living in you, that's giving you life, is now expressing itself through you to a greater measure. So then... You're in love with life because you're connected to life. And imagine how far you can go with this because the more you connect to that field and the more you connect to that life essence, the more you're going to feel in love with life because that's where your attention is. I, I guarantee you that if you did that every single day, you would be less likely to want to feel fear or pain or suffering or anger and more likely to want to feel those elevated states. And you're not going to be relying on anybody to make you happy. You're going to realize that happiness comes from within. I, I love it. And it, it's really a, a positive feedback loop, or I'm going to use this in a positive term, an addiction to an awareness of how, <laughs> of getting beyond yourself and how great that can feel. Absolutely. And, and so imagine in our week-long events, you got a thousand people in an event, and they all come for all those reasons. In the first two days, Wow, it's a scramble. There's a lot of chaos going on, but we keep going. And all of a sudden, people start popping. They start letting go. They start connecting. 
And all of a sudden, as they start connecting and their field starts to expand, their field starts influencing the person next to them. And all of a sudden, you see this generation of energy start to take place. And by the end of the event, there is energy in the room for the miraculous. There is energy in the room to heal. There's energy in the room for the uncommon, for a possibility. There's energy to create a new future because people are actually contributing to the field instead of drawing from the field. So, okay. How do we take this, in, in a sense, the term that just came to mind because you said we're generating is we're becoming generators. How do we use this to help each other? Hmm. Well, look, I mean, people think they, they think it's about their wealth or their health or their freedom or their new relationship or their new job. It's none of that. It's about who you become in the process. So you overcome your fear, you overcome your doubt, you overcome your unworthiness, you overcome your pain, you overcome your past. You keep overcoming, you keep overcoming, you keep overcoming. You're going to become somebody else. And once you become wealth, I mean, nobody creates wealth. You generate wealth. It's an energy. You generate freedom. You generate all those things. You, you are the generator of it. So then I love this because people are so conditioned, me included, for many years mm -hmm. that we have to drag our bodies through space to get what we want, right? That's, that's living in the world of separation, matter trying to change matter. And so the more I'm living by those survival emotions, the more it's going to take me time to get my dreams to come true. But in the quantum, if you're creating from the field instead of from matter, Einstein said the field is the sole governing agency of the particle. He didn't say the particle controls the particle. The field controls the particle. So if you're creating from the field instead of from the particle, when there's a vibrational match with your energy, and even Einstein said this, it's all vibration. When there's a vibrational match with your energy and some potential in the quantum field, you don't have to go anywhere to get it. In fact, you are going to collapse space and time, and the event is going to be drawn to you. Now, now you don't go anywhere to get it. You are, you are calling experiences to you. So then the final, the final point is that, well, then you got to take responsibility for every area of your life. Even the stuff that isn't working, because the stuff that isn't working, you got to change your energy then equal to something greater. And so then people will say, well, yeah, but, but you understand this person did it to me. And I would say, right, but if you keep reacting, you're going to create another one of those. So then what do you have to do? You have to get beyond the memories of our past and fall in love with the future over and over again so that all of a sudden you're believing in that future more than you're believing in the past. And the brain and body if we do it properly, will look like the future has already happened. Now you don't have to do anything. It's going to come to you.